Hello and welcome to my second uh, YouTube presentation on Microsoft Azure Advanced Threat Protection. Actually, this is a series of video tube uh, presentation on Microsoft security initiatives. I made my first uh, video on uh, Microsoft uh, Office 365 ATP and phishing emails. Um, those who have not got the chance to watch it, um, I strongly recommend and suggest to click the link in the comment section to have a view on Microsoft uh, Exchange Online Advanced Threat Protection. In, in that presentation, I have spoken about uh, that I'll be coming with the next presentation on Azure Advanced Threat Protection, and that's why this presentation is for you. Now, <clears throat> um, before I dive into Azure Advanced Threat Protection, uh, I just want to mention that this is still in the preview mode. Uh, Microsoft is working for the general availability, and I would let you know as soon as I get more information around uh, the GA dates. Now, before we start uh, looking into the Azure Advanced Threat Protection live demonstration, uh, we would need to understand uh, Microsoft Azure Advanced Threat Analytics because that's where it is originating from. Uh, in fact, ATP is the future roadmap or a cloud version of uh, Azure ATA and many of you who are familiar with advanced threat analytics knows uh, the challenges of deployment of Azure advanced threat analytics. So hopefully you'll find it interesting. At the same time, I also want to mention about this live demonstration. Um, I have divided this video into two parts uh, just to keep the quality of the video good. The part one would be just the introduction to make you aware of why and how we are handling it. Uh, what is the Microsoft future roadmap around advanced threat analytics and um, um, how you and your organizations can take advantage of uh, Azure Advanced Threat Protection. And the second uh, part of this video would be the actual live demonstration. And I can assure you that you will find this live demonstration very intriguing and very compelling because most of us have only heard about it, may not have ever experienced the actual attack and in the live demonstration, I would attempt to show you the actual attack on your Active Directory um, by stealing the identities, by stealing the ticket granting ticket, um, even going to the extent of uh, uh, domain dominance where I would have the, or the hacker would have the full control over your entire Active Directory domain. Uh, very intriguing, very compelling, at least that's how I see it. Very excited. Uh, to show you that demonstration and uh, hopefully with that you would be able to take the advantage of Azure Advanced Threat Protection in the near future. Um, with that, let's just uh, dive into and um, Azure Advanced Threat Protection cannot be talked unless uh, we have at least some understanding of Azure Advanced Threat Analytics. And uh, as many of you may already know that Azure Advanced Threat Analytics uh, is included in Microsoft Enterprise Mobility Plus Security subscription, though it could be bought as a separate line item too. Uh, Azure Advanced Threat Analytics, uh, though uh, if I show you here, I'm not gonna go into the extreme details of ATA because that's not the topic for today. The topic is ATP. But in order to understand ATP, it is important that uh, you understand uh, the premise here of ATA because ATP is using pretty much the same philosophy and same methodology um, and taking the advantage of the lesson learned through ATA to be included into ATP, um, which is more of a cloud-based solution than an on-prem solution. And not only take the advantage, ATP not only take the advantages of um, the identities on-prem, but it could also take care of your identities in the cloud too. So that's an interesting dynamic in the ATP, which we will see. Uh, but pretty much the Azure Advanced Threat Analytics works on three premises. One is to analyze the all the traffic that is coming and going through your Active Directory, collects the relevant events from your Active Directory, and if you are using a SIM, so uh, Active Directory would report those events to the SIM and SIM would collect that information and then send it to ATA, right? That's the process. And once uh, uh, at the same time, while this analysis is being analyzing or analysis is being done, sorry, that time the ATA is also in a learning mode and machine learning is, is a regular um, process 
where it is observing and analyzing your user's behavior and how and what they operate, where they access, how they access different resources, internal, external, cloud, or whatever the case may be. And based on this analysis and learning, it detects the possible attacks or attacks in the real time. That's interesting that not only it can see that how your users are behaving and what's going on, but it would report the actual attack in the uh, real time. And that's what I'm going to show you in my demonstration, as I promised earlier, right? So that's very interesting. Uh, another slide for as a uh, advanced uh, threat analytics architecture here. And I, as I promise, I'm not going to go into deep details here. But in order to understand ATP, you need to understand that why ATP may be a more suitable choice for you going forward to deal with the identity theft and attacks and the brute force attack and whatnot, right? I'm not going to make it too complex. That's my objective. I'm going to keep it simple because most of you may not be a true CISO or a security personnel. So as long as we keep it on, an, on that platform that average system admin can understand the product and can deploy it, uh, that is the objective here, right? So when we look at the ATA, Advanced Threat Analytics uh, architecture, it revolves around the ATA center, which is obviously sitting in the center, and that's why it's called an ATA center, but it is it could be a physical box or it could be a VM. Uh, recommended path is physical box, uh, though VMs are supported. Uh, it needs a lot of compute and storage because of excessive data that it has to process. It keeps a Mongo's database. Uh, that's a new database. I never used it, so I don't know. Uh, the management of that database is also going to be one of the challenges. And then once uh, you have understood the ATA center, and I'll show you the requirement uh, in uh, next slide, then you need to deploy some gateways. And the gateways are two different types. It could be a lightweight gateway, which you could deploy on your domain controllers. Or if your domain controllers are not capable of handling this load, uh, which also you would see in the next slide, then you would need to deploy separate VMs or separate servers as an ATA gateway. When you deploy ATA gateway, um, then you also need to see that whether you are going to put in the same domain or you're going to put into the work group as per security practices most customer would like to put it into a work group you also need to know how to do the port mirroring so you would be doing the port mirroring from your domain controllers to the ata gateway you would also have to forward uh, windows events which is windows event forwarding from your domain controllers to the ata gateway or from your sim database and then ATA would send this to back to these gateways would send this information back to the Mongo's database where it is being processed, analyzed, and um, you know you see all the functionality and feature which you're gonna see in a few minutes. So pretty much you need an ATA center, highly, highly uh, high compute requirements. You need um, either a lightweight gateway running on your domain controllers, you need ATA gateway, if your domain controls are not capable, most of the time you will find that. And then you need a lot of knowledge about port mirroring. You also need to have the self flight certificate to, and you also need to configure the firewall. So a lot of planning and designing required. And as a result, um, um, many customers are intrigued and they have not been able to deploy uh, the solution uh, just because of the complexity, just because of the additional hardware requirement here, right? Another example of uh, the ATA architecture, which is self-explanatory uh, in this slide, and um, ATA gateways, it could be lightweight, uh, lightweight gateway or a regular ATA gateway, and um, the it is mirroring the traffic, sending it to the ATA gateway, or even forwarding from SIM database or your domain controllers directly to the ATA gateway. ATA gateway passes it through the ATA center, where it is being processed there, right? So not gonna waste a lot of time into this slide and keep moving. Now, this is the real challenge that we need to talk about because that would establish that how simple ATP is and how efficient it would be to deploy it in your environment in your future, right? So as I discussed earlier, uh, ATA deployment requires on-prem infrastructure, additional hardware, 
the additional compute, additional storage, you would need ATA Center, which you saw in the earlier slide. And ATA Center requirement would be pretty intense depending on the size of your environment, right? So if you see in this right inside the table, and I'm not going to read it here, the minimum requirement starts with 32 gig of RAM memory and the CPU cores too, which by the way is not a hyper threaded core, these are physical cores, right? Now, if you uh, keep going up, you may end up 128 gig RAM and 40 core processor. So pretty beefy machine you need for the ATS center, right? And many customer would say, hey, why would I do that? I'm trying to go away from on-prem infrastructure, minimize my footprint on my data center, and I add this one more big box and big server for me with the Mongo's database and management and all. And that's... Uh, a genuine reason that many customers have yet not decided to deploy ATA in their environment. Then come the question of ATA gateways. And as I said, you can have ATA gateways, either the regular gateway running on a separate server, or you may be running on a domain controller as a lightweight gateway. Now look at the picture below where it shows the requirement for the ATA gate, the lightweight gateway is about 75.5% CPU consumption and a memory requirement is about 8 gig and as a result when you would do the capacity planning for ATA when you would run the Microsoft given nice sizing tool for ATA you would find that many of your existing domain controllers may not be the right candidate for lightweight gateway resources that means you would end up deploying more number of ATA gateways more VMs or more servers that you have to add into your infrastructure and that goes back to the same point that hey I'm going to using cloud services why do I need to keep adding more servers in my data centers right that's where this gets challenging and that's where most customers have found um, they have not decided to deploy it because of all these challenges and it obviously required it's not like a two-hour job that you can just go and deploy it, it will require proper planning, proper designing, proper architecture, you know, certificate, port mapping, whatnot, and you should really be good with that in order to take the advantage of, um, full advantage of Azure Advanced Threat Analytics, right? So that's the, that's the premise, and when you would look into Azure ATP here, which would be an extremely simplified deployment, the whole deployment may, ne may not even take 15 minutes, and that's intriguing. And by investing your 15 minutes into a solution, if you can prevent your organization from these possible, you know, brute force attack or, or identity theft or domain dominance, you know, or a hash pass through or whatnot, that's really intriguing. And that's exactly what we're going to see in our demo. Now, needless to say, that Azure ATP is the future cloud version of Azure ATA because we have seen the challenges in the last slide. Last slide. And Microsoft is working uh, to bring all the feature sets of ATA into Azure ATP. This is work in progress. Most of the features have already been introduced into ATP and they are still adding more as uh, they progress into a GA phase of Azure ATP. Solution has been much simpler. I mentioned that it takes about 10-15 minutes to deploy it. Um, and now this is the striking point that it uses a much improved ATP sensor, not the ATA gateways, right? Now it's just not the name change here. Microsoft has done a lot of work around this ATP sensors. Kudos to them because if you see in the picture below, the CPU requirement has dropped uh, down from 75.5 to 0.3 percent very impressive the memory requirement has dropped from 8 gig to about 1.8 gig that, that's extremely impressive um, you know improvement over ATA gateways now uh, question was asked in, in Microsoft Ignite I guess that uh, whether going forward ATA gateways would also be converted into kind of ATA sensors taking the advantage of this improvement and uh, what was promised is that once it is all done then most likely ATA gateways would be converted into ATA sensor kind of a thing so that they can take the advantage of these improvements. Now because of its simple deployment and much reduced compute requirements system admins will be able to install and configure it without 
being a true security or a network specialist. And that is the that is the big value proposition behind Azure ATP. My I myself is not a security specialist. I'm not a CISO. I am a senior Microsoft solution architect and I deploy this technology and I get intrigued and that's why I'm here too excited to talk about it and to demo the solution to you. Hopefully you'll find it impressive and effective and valuable to your organization. Azure ATP uses the same process, analyze, learn, detect, and report, right? So you will see that in action in a few minutes. With that, I would request you to click the link below um, in the comment section to go to the Azure ATP live demonstration. I can promise you, I can almost guarantee you, you will be, it will be interesting for you to see something that you might not ever have seen before, right? So all the attacks, how do you, I take control of a machine? How do I get into the domain? How do I get control of the domain? And um, you, will, you will realize that it's not a rocket science. It's pretty straightforward and scary. The good news is that you would also see when somebody tries to do that and you are deploying Azure ATP, you are secure, you are prevented, you can take actions almost immediately because uh, Azure ATP sh shows you all these activities all in the life to real time, right? So that's what we are going to see. So please, please ensure to go to the part two. And thank you very much for watching it. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope to talk to you soon and have rest of the day. Have rest of the best of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye.